Hello everyone and uh, today I'm going to show you how to draw something simple um, like a bird. Um, very beautiful but very simple because um, unlike maybe horses and dogs or people's faces they're not as complex so it's probably quite a good thing to start with if you haven't done a lot of drawing. Um, before I start I just want to talk a little bit about uh, why people often think they can't draw realistically. I, ha I hear so many people saying, oh, I, I can't draw, you know, I can draw stick men and that's about it. You know, I've never had the skill. You've either got it or you don't. I don't think that's true. I, th I think everybody can learn to draw, can learn to draw better than they think they can. Um, it's because it's not so much about the ability to draw, like, like I've always said, it's more about the ability to really see something, to really look at the world in, in, a, in a different kind of way to the way that they were normally used to looking at. And I think when you shift your perception and look at things differently, you will be amazed, I think, at what, at what you can actually do. I think there's two ways of looking at the world. Um, you can either look at it in a functional way. Most of the time, we, we have to look at the world in a functional way. You know, we, we, um, if we're going to, you know, drink a cup of coffee or tea, um, you know, we, we look at the hand or we look at our hand. We look at, you know, the, the bit that we need to look at so that we don't spill it and we put it down again and most of that mug we don't really look at we don't spend any time looking at it you know we only spend time looking at the things we need to look at when we're looking at people's faces you know we look at their eyes and we miss everything else. everything else is a bit of a blur most of life really is is what i call blind spots we we don't really look at the things look at things unless we really need to um now, there's another way of looking at the world, and in a, I call it in a contemplative way. Um, and that's just to really, really look at something, look at the areas that you wouldn't normally look at. Um, and you, you realize that the world is basically abstract. You know, it's a whole load of abstract shapes, contours, lines, contrasts, negative space shapes, a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. And when you put all these things together, it forms recognizable things like trees, like people, like coffee cups, like birds. But really, when you strip it all apart, it's abstract. Um, and when you see the world in an abstract way, when you when you really look at all of these shapes, everything becomes so much easier to draw. Obviously, you don't want to get the two things confused. You know, when you are drinking coffee and you're going, oh, wow, look at the light reflecting on, on the handle. That's so beautiful. You know, you're going to spill it all down you. You know, if you're crossing the road and, and you're looking at, the, you know, the beautiful color on the underbelly of a cloud, you're going to get run over. So... You know, obviously, you could, we, we have to choose when to look at the word in a contemplative way and when to look at it in a functional way. But the problem is, this is the problem, is when people, the problem with drawing, when people start drawing, they're so used to looking at the world in a functional way that they still look at, they still look at something in a functional way. So they will spend time looking at the eye and the beak, for example, or a person's eyes, but they'll miss everything else. And what happens is the brain fills in all those missing bits. This is why people draw kind of realistically, but very simplistically. You know, they'll they'll draw trees like this. They'll draw houses, you know, like this and clouds like this. It, it's kind of like a simplistic representation of what the world looks like. Nothing to do with lack of drawing skill, lack of intelligence. It's just because we're, we're so used to looking looking at certain things and not other things and our brain fills in all these missing parts now when you're drawing something what i try and tell people to do is to look at it in a more contemplative way and there are things you can do that will that will um train you, you, your eyes to look at things differently one thing you can do is before you start drawing something just cut out a little hole in a piece of paper and uh, i give this uh, exercise to my students Put it over a part of whatever it is you're drawing so that it doesn't really look like anything recognizable and just draw as accurately as possible what you see in that little hole, a little bit like this. And then just move it around and do it again. Um, you don't have to get every single tiny little bit, but try and make it as accurate as you can. And you will be surprised with how accurate that little square is compared to the, the, the part that you were drawing. Um, that's a really good exercise to do, I think, before you start drawing something. When you do start drawing something, to make it simpler, I think I call this blocking paper. So rather than looking at the whole thing and think, oh my God, there's so many things there, it's all a bit daunting, and then just picking out, like I said, the bits that you think are important, try and block it up with some paper and just draw a part at a time. 
maybe just a you know just a, a quarter of it or, or or just the head and then and then move the paper along kind of block bits out just basically block out part most of the image and just reveal parts of the image and just draw the parts that you're revealing um i guarantee you you'll be able to draw better than you think you can another thing you can do as well is um is basically to when you are drawing um another way of doing it which i've seen people do is just just reveal a bit at a time with the paper that you're drawing on like this so just a section at a time so that's another way of doing it but basically or you can even turn it upside down and draw the whole thing upside down obviously not you upside down it's not a yoga class um the image upside down um, but basically anything to do, anything that you do uh, to, to fool the brain and to actually force yourself to draw what you're seeing rather than what you think you're seeing. Um, so um, I'm not going to use blocking paper, um, but I'm first thing I'm going to do is, like I've said to you before, just make your piece of paper a little bit messy because mess is good. And there's nothing scarier than a white sheet of paper. Think, oh, no, I can't. Oh, no, I've made a mistake. And people get very stressed out. Don't get stressed. It should be fun, enjoyable. It should be messy. You know, you, you know, it's 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 not a sheet of gold. You know, it's a piece of paper. Um, it doesn't matter. Even if you start again, even if you rub things out, it doesn't matter if it's messy, especially if you're drawing an animal or something. You want it to be a bit messy. You, you don't want it to be all too static or too perfect. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to just start over here. Um, you know, you notice I'm not just drawing one line and hoping for the best. I don't know exactly where the right line is going to be, but I'm just I'm just going to start by doing these, you know, kind of messy lines. I can clean it up later. I'm really just focusing on one part at a time. It's a bit like tunnel vision, which, you know, doesn't necessarily help in relationships having tunnel vision, but it really helps you when you're actually drawing something. So I'm just focusing on a little, a little bit like um, an old black and white film, you know, when it comes to that little hole at the end, you just see things through a little hole. That's kind of what, what I'm imagining when I'm drawing something. So I'm kind of forgetting that it's a bird, really. I'm just really looking at all of these shapes. Um, and maybe I'm gonna to start to, to kind of shade these shapes in as, as I go along using my finger. I'm using charcoal. You don't necessarily need to use charcoal. It's just, uh, you can do all this with pencil. It's just that it's a, hopefully a bit easier for you to see. Um, and I'm just really just looking at, at these shapes. Um, there's a dark shape here like this what I'm going to do is just use my rubber remember you can use your rubber just just to get a little bit of it, that tiny little bit of the eye in there um, like that um, I'm going to bring this shape in down here and I'm really just remember what I said about blind spots really try and focus on the areas you wouldn't normally look at you wouldn't when you're looking at a bird you wouldn't normally look at, at, at the at the way that the, the 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 head connects to the the body, you know this bit of the neck. You wouldn't you wouldn't look at this little area here. You wouldn't look at you just you look you would look at the the functional areas. So try and be contemplative. Try and really look at look at all. and sometimes it, it can give people a headache because they're not used to looking at these areas of of the world. Um, they're used to looking at certain things, but not other things. So just trying to get the head. I'm not tr I'm not going for hundred percent detail. As I go along, I'm just trying to get the basic shapes. I'm going to come back later and put all the tiny bits of detail in. Um, and let's just have a look up here. I'm going to make this really dark down here. I'm going to, there's, the, this wing is very complicated, but for now I'm using impressionistic techniques. So the way that you shade, especially if you're doing anything with hair or, or feathers, try and shade in the direction of the fur or the feathers or the hair. That way you'll get texture automatically without having to do every single little bit. It's called impressionism. You can do impressionism when you're painting, you can do it when you're drawing. It's about getting detail without actually picking at every single tiny little bit. Um, and let's come up here with this wing. It's just coming out like this. There's kind of like all these, there's so many shapes. For now, as I say, I'm just I'm just going to get the basic tones, the basic contrast, the basic kind of shapes. Using my finger a lot, always like using my finger. Just trying to get the basic shapes here and the belly here. Just really looking at this shape now. Now, every now and again, you need to look at something in a functional way. 
too much of, of contemplating and looking at abstract bits and pieces, you'll get everything looking good, but it, it won't kind of flow. Because at the end of the day, it is a bird. You know, it, it, yes, it's a series of shapes and, and contours and lines and contours, but it's also a bird. And, and so every now and again, this is what I tell people is, is um, take your, your blocking paper away if you're using blocking paper, stand back and just look at it in a functional way. As I stand back, I can see, you know, that bit needs to come down. And then you end up sculpting. You know, I call it sculpting. So, and altering, you'll find that most of your drawing or painting are alterations. Don't think of them as mistakes, you know? Um, you're down there, aren't you? Um, don't think of them as mistakes. You know, I don't like the word mistakes when it comes to art. It's all about just finding your way with it. All artists have to sculpt and, and make mistakes and alter and change things. It's all part of the process. If it was right first time, it just wouldn't be any fun and it wouldn't really have much life really if we didn't make any mistakes you, you know what we do is we try and incorporate all of those mistakes all of that mess within your drawing and rather than making it bad or not good it actually makes it so much better um right so let's just come down here it just gives it more life you know really um I guess it's like in life, really, you know, you, you don't want to, um, you know, you, you, you kind of, um, we make mistakes in life and obviously we want to, we want to improve ourselves, but at the same time, we don't want to push all of that difficult, dark stuff away. We want to kind of embrace it and, and work with it and, and improve and build on it. And I find that drawing, you know, all these kind of life art, um, analogies often kind of help me quite a lot, really. Um, right. So, yes, we don't want perfectionism, really. I don't think per perfectionism really, really helps. It just makes things a bit sterile. Um, okay, here we go. Right. And just going to come down here a little bit, a little bit of shading here. Um, now, what I'm going to do is just a little bit of contrast. So, um, the head is darker than the background. So I'm going to show you the background a little bit here, but I'm going to keep the head darker, maybe a little bit here, a little bit darker than the background. The belly is lighter than the background. So what I'm going to do is just clean up the belly a little bit with my rubber, sculpt that. And what I'm going to do is shade the background now outside the belly. So I'm shading the background outside the belly. And remember what I told you kind of last time is that what we want to try and do is get rid of as many outlines as possible. Because in life, things don't have outlines. They just have internal shading or external contrast. And everything is made up of those things. Um, so as you can see there, that outline has been lost. This outline is going to be lost. But this outline is different because this is internal shading because the bird here is darker than the background. So I'm gonna put a little bit of shading in the background, but I'm going to make the belly of the bird darker than the background. So you can see two, the two different contrasts here, and um, each of those contrasts make the outline invisible. Either, either it goes into the bird or outside of the bird. Either way, outlines, it's, I mean, you don't have to do that. I mean, you can still have quite a sketchy drawing with lots of outlines, but, the more realistic you want it to be, the more contrasts you should try and put in. Um, so let's just try and just get this leg in very quickly. Uh, and this shape as well. Looking at negative space shape. So I'm looking at the shape here between the legs of the bird and, and the branch. Um, and then we've got the tail. Obviously, I'm, you don't have to go as fast as this. You know, I wouldn't normally go quite this fast. Um, so that's the, the basic bird here. It, 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 that's the basic kind of bird. What I would then do is kind of go into it and maybe now start to put a little bit more detail like this. Really use my rubber as well for texture. Broken rubbers are brilliant for this kind of thing. Just, just using the edge of the rubber like this. And there's a little bit of light there. I'm, I'm just going to get that little bit of light in. I love using rubbers. It's so good. After a while, you end up using your rubber more than you use your pencil or charcoal. Um, now, I'm not going to put all the detail in this thing because we'll be here forever. And I think you're probably getting bored anyway 
if you're still watching, I hope you are. Um, I do go on a little bit. Um, uh, I would spend more time, you know, using my rubber oh, to get some of these really nice, you know, the, these just things here. You don't have, even when you're putting detail, you don't have to spend ages, you know. Uh, for example, what, for the, all these little lines here, I can just smudge that whole thing in and then just use the edge of my rubber just to streak it like that. And then maybe just use enhancing some of those little streaks like this. Um, it's very dark here and uh, it's very dark here under the bird. And that's often how, you know, to get detail rather than spending ages and ages and ages on it, you can find simplistic ways, simpler ways of getting detail. I just want to, I've just realized up here, the background, because every time you look at it, you will see something different. You know, you, 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 you will always, you, every time you stand back, you'll, you'll see errors in proportion, you'll, you'll see contrast, you'll see things you didn't see. So you've got to keep it messy, you've got to keep it flexible. Um, I'm going to show you this background, really dark here. Coming down to the birdie, like this. And then maybe again, just because just, just you've done something once doesn't mean that's it. You know, you often end up doing things loads and loads and loads of times until you're kind of happy with it. Um, I think we'll kind of end that there, really, because otherwise I'm, I am going to spend a bit too long. Can't really see his eye, actually, which is a bit of a shame because I do love eyes, but tiny little bit of bit here, like this. And it's really, now I'm looking at it closer, I can see it's really dark here. A little bit, if you're going to spend more time on anything, you would spend more time, I'd normally spend more time on the eyes and, and, and the face, you know. Probably the extra amount of detail that I'd put in at, at these areas, really. Um, anyway, so I think I'm going to end it there. So there end of the lesson. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, I'm going to just show it to you a little bit closer. Ta -da. It's yeah, you know, it's not the best thing I've ever done. I, I've rushed it, but hopefully, um, hopefully that will give you, um, you know, a few a, a few kind of tips that might help you. Remember. Try and keep the negative self-talk down. It don't keep saying, oh no, it's not looking good. Oh, I can't draw. See, I can't draw, I can't draw. Just, just observe those thoughts, but don't run with them because you can draw, okay? Everybody can draw. And <laughs> I've had to do this so many times because I, I, there's always parts where, where I keep crying. I know it's a bit pathetic, but uh, I get emotional about this stuff. And um, it's quite an emotional time for everyone and um okay i can't stop this one now because it's right at the end and i don't know how to edit these things so um anyway okay love you all and and keep well and just enjoy drawing and painting and uh, okay <laughs>